What's up? My name is Spencer um, from Under Oath. Yeah. And I'm Aaron from Under Oath. Do you need last names? Gillespie and Gillespie. Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Comma Spencer. Yeah. Most proud record. Um, probably lost in sound of separation. I think that was Under Oath figured it out completely about what exactly we were doing. I would 100% agree with that because... <coughs> The other day, Spencer and I were driving somewhere. We were driving to the rehearsals for, for the what story. we're doing now, yeah. and we hadn't, I hadn't played with Under Oath in seven years. Um, and so we were listening to the records and, you know, kind of wrapping our brains around um, what we had to do. And um, we listened to a few songs off that record because we did one song off that record for a few shows on this tour. And I really feel like that record was exactly what we were trying to say um, kind of all along. And, and when you're an artist in a band, you some of the most beautiful moments are you finding your way to where you're going artistically you know what I mean and I think that we had such good luck because we were on our way to that point yeah to that place I think that was us getting where we needed to be yeah I mean to, to the point where I hadn't listened to records since you know you don't really listen to records a lot after you you make them it's mixed you listen to it for a week and then you're on tour playing and every night you don't listen to it I probably haven't listened to it since the tour off that record and I put it in and felt and it was like oh my god like, I felt it all. I felt I knew exactly where I was. I felt the pain. Like we were hurting on that record. Yeah. We were both really hurt. And, like, I just, it was there. I was like, that's, that's a powerful record for we me. Wrote, we wrote all the lyrics to that, to that record in the front seat of my 98 Chevy S10. Like, sitting out in front of the studio, we both would write all the time and then compare and, and compile. And that's how we did, did all the Under Oath records. Um, and I remember sitting out there and just being so bummed at life at the time. And that record, same, when I when we listened to it, I went right back to that place, which was interesting, you know, because I don't really, none of the other Under Earth records have ever done that to me. Like, it put me right yeah, back a, to where I was. So, yeah, I think lyrically and emotionally and where we were as people really is spoken um, yeah. really loudly with that record. So I would say that record is our most proud, for sure. Listening back to our first record, is, this lineup, Chasing Safety at times could, was a little tough. First time I listened back to Define the Great Line, which had been a long time, getting ready for this tour before we started practice, I teared up for sure. I texted someone and they all made fun of me, but <laughs> I, I, would, really, I definitely I mean, felt uh, it was. It, it, you make a record, you put it away. You go on the road. You don't. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. Uh, it would be grandiose for me to say that we listen to our own music because you just don't unless you have to. Because um, you spend so much time of your life and blood, sweat, and tears putting into it that I feel like listening to it is. Is a, is a little bit advantageous, yeah. I guess, in some ways, but in other ways, it's a little bit uh, narcissistic. But yeah, listening back to to especially to find the great line was really emotional for me as well. I think that yeah, chasing safety has some definite cheese on it, like some real deep cheese. There's some whiz. There's some whiz on that. There's one. some cheese whiz on that one. But you know, <clears throat> we were kids. We were. I think that's the cool thing about if you listen to Under Oath's catalog, you can see. We came together as a band and made a record, and then we went on tour and figured out. People ask me all the time, "What? Why did Define the Great Line so different?" Because like, if you saw us live during Chasing Safety, we sounded even kind of like Define the Great Line playing Chasing Safety songs. It was more violent. It was very raw. We were diving off. It was like Dillinger Escape Plan play, performing Chasing Safety. So we we just we said, "Well, let's make a record that feels like we do live. Like let's just there was no conscious effort to make some." genre-defying record that was what's compared to now like we just we're like well we, we don't really sound like this live so let's like just try to do that and that's you know what's really interesting that record. we had this conversation the other day is I don't I don't know how we wrote all those songs <laughs> like as a songwriter <laughs> now I mean I'm a I'm a I have a pub deal I write songs for a lot of different people like I write probably a hundred or more songs a year for myself and for other people and I listen back to the, I mean, we're talking about 30 to 40 songs right now, you, you know, involved in those records. Less, you know, 30 songs. And I don't remember how. Like, I, you know, I listen back to that and go, wow, like, we thought of that? Or, like, why would we do that? You know, like, now in your 30s being like, what the fuck are we thinking yeah. about? Like, how did that happen? And that's been the nicest surprise for me, you know, relearning all this stuff is going, why would I do that at 22 years old? That's cool. Like at 23 years old, why did I think that was a good idea? You know what I mean? So that's really neat. So, yeah. I think Under Oath shaped our lives completely, uh, <clears throat> which is 
kind of a, a, a question we answer to a lot of kids at our meet and greets too and of why we broke up in the first place and um, I think growing up on the road with a bunch of friends from like 17 on is is going to really change who you are like you as a teenager you're kind of all the same person i would think like you're you're in a band for a reason you all like the same bands you you eat the same foods you believe in the same beliefs and you know go you're just the same and growing up on the road you know like becoming a man you kind of drift apart and become an individual different things in your life like life happens and I think we would be all completely different humans if it wasn't for Under Oath, like uh, growing up together. Like me and Aaron, it, you know, we, we hadn't slept in a hotel room together in, a, in a, a handful of years, even though we were still friends after we parted ways together in Under Oath. But I, I asked him the other day, I was like, does it ever feel like this for you anywhere else? Like, you've been touring other bands, I tour in other bands. And it's like, no, it, it doesn't because I think when you're that young and you're developing and your personality develops and like we were very like codependent and like we did everything together and that's just you become a man and then you're used to doing this thing with your best friend all the time and then when that's that once that changes everything's everything's different you know like I don't really know how to explain it other than like it never feels right unless you're with your family and we're family because we spent that much time together I mean, yeah all, all, all of us like we don't you know, I tour with other bands now, you know, playing drums or doing whatever, and everyone's great. But on a day off, or like if there's a, like, everyone just, a few, you know, you hang out, but like people go and do their own thing. I don't know what that's like. You know, we grew up from nothing. We came from nothing. We had nothing. We had no money. None of us come from money. We all grew up dirt poor. Every single one of us. No one came from money. No one came from um, any sort of. Like no one had any opportunities. There, there wasn't a scene. No one had any there opportunities. No, there was no thought in making money doing what we were doing as well. So we grew up together and we did everything together. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So it shaped. I think it shaped us being in this band and making these records in every way. It gave us our identity. And you know when we broke up and I left and the whole big debacle. I think we had to. I think that was that was us saying we have to figure out ourselves so we can come back and do this healthfully. And we, we have this saying in the last few weeks, like post-30 under oath is so much better than pre-30 under oath. Absolutely. You know, because the bullshit filter goes away, right? Like when you get older, you don't, it doesn't you're matter. A man. It you're, doesn't you're matter. A man. Like you're, you're you, you're still alive. Like I don't need someone telling me every day how to live my life. Like I've lived it, I'm still, I'm here. I'm doing just fine. We just lived apart from each other for three and a half years. We're all great, we're all better people than we were. So I think that hit when we all just, like, there was no plan of getting back together, or no matter what, you know, press might say this was the plan the whole time, it never was. There was there was the big, like, never talking to you again, like, the, the last show, good riddance kind of vibe. And as time went on, I think you realized that you are a family and why you started this, why we started playing music, and why we're a family. And families always come back to each other, I think. and. Yeah, and now it's just kind of like, dude, we're like, we don't need to sit here and remind each other like how to be more like each other. Like We're all individuals, and that's perfectly okay, and we're all happy. It's almost tragic when you're in your 20s, when you realize you, you, know, you have success as an artist, and then you watch each other begin to break off and become their own individual, and you're like, what's happening? We've lost it. You know, so many times we would look. We at lost each him. He's we gone. Oh, now that so guy's So many times we look at know? each other and go, our band is broken or fractured. That's that's honestly the core and the crux of why Under Oath had so many problems inter band. We always loved each other, There's, but we watched each other become other people, and it scared the shit out of us. We were like, we can't. You can't become your own man. Like you have to do what this exactly is exactly what we do, do. What we do. This is this is the group. This is who we are. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm saying post thirty Under Oath is so much better because now. We are all six entirely different. Well, Spencer and I are kind of alike, but everyone else is in. You know, we're all entirely different individuals, and it, no one gives a shit. It doesn't matter. And life happens. Yeah, that's it. You know? Death happens. You know, like in family and all, all around you. Like you see things, and it affect. It's going to affect you. It's going to affect every person differently. How do you want Under Oath to be remembered? 
feel like it's a it should be a one word answer somehow. Like that we were real. That there was no. That feels a little manufactured to say, but I mean it. Like that we were real. That there was no. We never started to make money. We never started to be successful. Um, we, we didn't write a song with a human being. We ne- never co-wrote. Never co-wrote a song. Never did anything because a label told us to. Never did anything because a manager told us to. And a lot of these things could have been our demise too. But we were definitely ourselves. We just did. We just did what made us happy, man. I think honesty is the name of the game. Realness, yeah. We we. I want people to remember that we did our. We did. We did we, us. We ran our own shit. Yeah. I don't want to be remembered for anything except for the music that we leave. Yeah, I don't want to be remembered as a Christian metalcore band. Yeah, I, I that phrase kind of sucks. You know, no matter what you believe or what, if everyone believes or not, it's not about that. I think putting labels in front of things is just really tough because you're, you're not allowing it to be universal, which is what music is there for. Up for opinion if you like it or not. But I want Under Oath to be remembered as Under Oath, not Under Oath, the Christian metalcore band, Warped Tour band thing. I don't like that, you know? Yeah, I think I think there's beauty and ambiguity, though. You know what I mean? Like, for a, with a band like Under Oath being a bit ambiguous, like, to other people. Like, you know, think about when, when you first, like, heard something and you're like, that's for me. You know what I mean? Like, you could heard this beautiful piece of music and the lyric, you're like, shit, that, this person wrote that for me. Do you know what I mean? Like... If you're depressed around Christ- Christmas and you listen to Joni Mitchell River, you're gonna be like, I, I wish I had a river I could skate the hell away on too. You know what I mean? Like, for me, like, I feel like that Under Earth has been that for a lot of people. Like, that's for me. Like, regardless of their social stance or their their religious belief or whatever, like they've been able to say, this helps me or this pushes me in this direction. This makes me feel this or this makes me feel that. And I think that's why that Under Earth wishes and wants, and I can say this for everybody that we don't want to be associated with being a Christian medical band me- medical Christian medical band Christian medical band you know what I mean because to me like putting a, a label on that it, it it erases the ambiguity you know and people can't feel like this is just for me like you know what I mean if we if we lived with that label we would we would erase a lot of a lot of people who really love this music and I think yeah. that's a disservice to the universe Honestly, not saying we're that big of a band, but I mean, like, to put that out there to say we're only going to make music for this type of people is that's we scary. We weren't writing worship songs at all. And that scares me, yeah. So, I feel like that's wrong somehow. You know what I mean? Music is, the, is a universal thing. You know what I mean? And I feel like some music, yeah, if you're like writing worship tunes, like, that's, that's, for, a, that's for a specific time, for a specific reason. But I want Under Oath to be something that everyone can remember as something that helped them or led them through something or pulled them out of a hole, you know, regardless if they are whatever their religious creed is. Who said it was the end? I, why why yeah, is I messed it? I'm, just, I'm so over that shit. It's every day. No. But we wouldn't have got back together to just do a tour. I want to make that clear with everybody. <clears throat> I, saw, I mean, I don't check a lot of comments, but I saw some kid calling me out saying that I'm doing this for money. It's like, that's if you know anything about me, which you obviously do, I'm touring all the time for no money. I don't care about money. I do music because I love it. And You've Under seen Oath, us both play in tiny rooms. Under Oath is... You know. Under Oath is not back to just r- rake in a bunch of money and go, peace out. No, we, we decided that, you know, we were a family, like I was saying earlier, and we, we wanted to... There's no point to put an end to something I don't think unless a member is dead or something like that has happened like why why do you need to go we're never going to play these songs again that was one of the hardest things for me is like so this song that means so much to me that I poured my heart and soul into I'm not allowed to perform it ever again why would I do that to myself why would my friends do that to me it could be five years from now where we decide to play another show but why does this anything have to be an end why can't it just be like, Under Oath is back together? Yes. Will there be more tours? Probably, absolutely, 100% in my mind. Will there be more records? I would hope so. But right now, we're focused on this tour, being a family, getting along, and taking it day by day. Because 
in our world before there was such a schedule release the record every two years if you're not on the cover of this magazine you're not doing well if you're not doing this interview you lost it and if you're not on this tour you got to be on warp tour you got to be on mayhem you got to be on tour 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 and dude it just dissolved us into I mean, we burned it out we were touring yeah. 10 months a year you know, a so band that shouldn't be touring that much. The reunited, the rebirth under oath, if you will, you'll see, you know, three months a year, a month a year maybe. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. We're going to tour when it makes sense for everyone, including our fans. Like you don't want to show up too much. You don't want, it needs to be right. It needs to be, it needs to be a purpose. Don't, we're not going to tour just a tour. We're going to play in every country that we can and play these songs for everyone and take it a day by day and step by step and make sure that the foundation is solid before we start building a house on it you know it's like we're just going to sink again so i think the reason it's been so ambiguous is because we don't want to like promise anything or get people's hopes up but i mean just getting the band back in a room together i don't think could have happened to just do a tour that would be we'd all up there hating each other and if you you've seen this tour live or if you're going to see this tour live you'll see it when you watch the band if you've seen the band before, you've never seen it like this, where everyone's happy and respects each other. There's an extra element on that stage. The band's better than ever. I don't know why. Why? Because everyone respects each other, and we're happy. That's never been that way before. Since we have, 04, to, we have, to, been we have to protect that. Now, Since 04, you know, it there's took us always 12 been someone years. who yeah. didn't like someone or didn't believe in this guy or thought this guy wasn't good enough. Always. Until now. And now when you see that, that's like, you know it's not fake. It's not a money grab. It's not a tour just because we're bored. It's a the band learned how to be a band for the first time in 13 years, you know. So, no, this is not the end. And I think protecting that though it will be the reason why it won't be as frequent as it once was. It's protecting that synergy, you know, protecting that magic yeah. that we found again. And other you know people I mean? have other things going on, you know. I do sleep wave. He does Paramore. Tim has a merch company, and you know, people have kids and. You can make a van, band very successful and not have to tour 11 months a year if you put in the work. We put in the 10 years of cutting our teeth. You know, we were out there all the time. Now we can kind of do it smart. We just had to take a step back to see what that was. Not knowing that we were taking a step back. We had to burn it out and walk away and never speak again until we, you know, the smoke cleared and the dust settled and we figured it out, you know. You know, we, we got pushed so much by, we have the best fans. We got, I mean, every band says that. Like, we got the best fans, man. But our fans really pushed us, you know. Like, for the whole... It never stopped. It never stopped. <coughs> like, let's the do comments this. Never we stopped. need to see this. Let's do this. This helped me through this time in my life. This helped me get from point A to point B in my life. I want to see it again. I want to see it. You know, and it's, it's, it's really interesting. Is You'll see tonight, we ask this question every night. Who's never seen Under Oath? You know... Two, three thousand people a night, and three quarters of the crowd have never seen Under Us. I would it's, say a third, a third to half. Dude, some nights it's insane. Let's fight about it. Okay. Um, some nights it's insane. Like a lot of people, and I found this through VIP meet and greets and meeting people. Like, you know, they were in middle school or elementary school even, and their brother, big brother, who was listening to Chasing Safety or Define the Great Line, said, "Here's this piece of music. I want you to have this." And then that kid then fell in love with this piece of music. Or the kid that was in college that couldn't afford to go. You know, or just people that weren't going to shows all that time. And I think because of all those people, the whole time we were broken up, they were like, I never saw Under Oath, I want to see this. So we're very lucky and blessed that our fans really kind of pushed us here. You know? <laughs>